let's learn how to add beautiful grain textures to your illustrations in Illustrator in this quick and simple tutorial. So before I set off on this tutorial, I just want to give you a broad overview of what we're doing here. We're essentially taking a flat design like this and we're applying this gorgeous grain texture to it to add more character to your illustrations and bring it to life a little more. Now this can look a little overwhelming initially, so what I've done is broken down on the right hand side here what is going on. So when you have a multi-layered illustration and the shape is a bit more complex, you need to break down each shape and decide where you want to apply the effect to. So as you can see here with the dog illustration, I have applied this effect to the whole of the face, inside the ears, to the cravat, to the body and to the tail. So it's important to identify these key areas that you want to apply the grain texture to so that then you can repeat this tutorial on the individual sections. So let's jump in, let's learn how to add the grain texture to certain areas and then you can repeat this as many times as you like throughout the illustration. So here is a copy of the flat vector. So let's start by applying the grain texture to the head area. So first things first, identify the shape in which you want to apply the texture to. So for me, if I select this head shape here, this is the shape I want to use. I just command or control Z to go back. So select it with selection tool, edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And with this copied shape, let's apply the color in which we want the grain texture to be. So if I come over to my swatches palette, as you can see up here, I use a darker red to create shadow. You can also do this with highlights. You could make this like a cream or a yellow to make it look like there's sun shining on him, but I'm gonna stick with shadow. So if we come back down, let's select the red here. So that's what we'll use for the color of the grain. Collapse the swatches, repeat again, edit, paste in place. From there, come to your gradient tool. And if you can't find it, window gradient, and just add a black and white gradient by clicking the slider. You can keep a linear gradient or you can switch to radial. We can always change this later, so this doesn't matter too much to begin with. With this gradient shape selected, effect, texture, and grain. In the grain window, make sure your grain type is set to regular. And now using intensity and contrast, you can decide whether you have a more intense, harsher grain texture or a more blended, fuzzy grain texture by playing around with intensity and contrast. So let's set intensity around 40 and let's set the contrast around 75. So these are not exact numbers. Feel free to play around with them and get the effect you're looking for. And once you're happy, click OK. Make a copy of this gradient by holding Alt and then clicking and drag out copy, then select the original, Command or Control C to copy, and then backspace to delete. Now select the pasted in place shape, come to your transparency panel, and if you can't find it, go to Window, Transparency, and from there, double click to make an opacity mask. With this opacity mask selected, Command or Control V to paste in the gradient and press inverse mask to flip and let's click and drag this in here and let's use the selection tool to line this up with the outline of the shape from here now if i press g for gradient tool and switch to my gradient panel i can now make changes accordingly by adjusting the gradient slider so i can make this more intense less intense i can make the gradient larger or smaller can also rotate the gradient if I like, and I can also switch to linear, radial, and so on and so forth. I can also move the gradient around as such. So play around with the gradient until you're happy, and once you're happy with the positioning of the gradient, come back to your transparency panel. And this is really important now, you have to double click to come out of the opacity mask. So as you can see up here in the layer, we are inside the opacity mask now. So as we're inside the mask, we can't do anything outside of it. So double click to come out. And now if I use selection tool, there we go. There's my mask, command control zero to go back. And because I'm now out of the mask, I can select other parts on the canvas. Just quickly zoom in here. So one final thing now we need to do is rearrange this. So this grain texture is over the top of the eyes of the ears, and I want those to come to the front. So if I make sure this gradient mask is selected, go to Object, Lock, Selection, and now I can select the things behind it. So what I wanna do, select the objects below the gradient mask you want to come to the surface, hold Shift, so I select the two eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the two ears, and then if I right click, Arrange, and bring to front, 
And now if I select off, the grain texture is being applied to the fur, but not over the eyes and the ears. And there we go, that section is done. And remember then, once done, object, unlock all, and I release the mask. The nice thing is now I can go back at any time and make changes to this mask. So if I come to selection tool, select it, make sure I come back to my transparency panel and make sure I double click to go into the mask. So I'm inside the mask and now I can make changes. So I press G again, I can go back in and I can change the gradient if I like, I can change color, so come to swatches. So say I wanna try it with some highlights maybe, and try a lighter color, or I can switch back to a shadow. And again, once I am happy with the changes, all I have to do, double click to come out of the mask, and come back to my selection tool. And there we have it. When you're shifting up objects, and bringing them to the front, you might need to group them together. So you see these three here, I had already grouped. So if they're not grouped together, just select the objects, hold shift, right click and group, and you'll put them into a group. And you can always ungroup them then at a later date. And now all I have to do is repeat this process for the other areas of the illustration. So for me, that would be two years. That would be his cravat here. That would be the body of the dog and finally the tail as well. Now you might find you need to combine shapes together to apply the gradient to certain areas. So for example, say I didn't want the body and the tail separate, I wanted the gradient to apply across the both of them. All I have to do, select one with selection tool, hold shift to select the second. Let's create a duplicate by holding out or option and clicking out the two duplicated shapes. And then if I just come to my Pathfinder tool and unite the shapes there, I can then use that pasted over the top of these two to be the base of my grain texture. Don't be afraid to unite shapes together. Just make sure you make a duplicate of them first and then place it back over the top. And then once you have repeated this process across all the different areas of your illustration, you will eventually end up with something like this. And remember, at any time, these textures are fully editable by simply selecting the appropriate one with Selection Tool, come into the Transparency Panel, and double-clicking to go into the Opacity Mask. And from there, you can change the gradient, you can change the colors, and so on and so forth. So there you have it. That's how to add gorgeous grain textures to your illustrations to really bring them to life and to give them a very rustic feel. I hope this kind of full workflow really kind of broke down this technique for you and helped you better understand how you need to apply this on more complex illustrations several times. And with this technique, you should be able to really add some character, some charm, and some beauty to your illustrations and really kind of make them pop off the canvas compared to the flat vector. So I hope you found the tutorial helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep on designing, and I will see you for the next tutorial.